Now, I put the question to you, at what point does Christ receive Latreo? This is almost as James D.G. Dunn, he, who recently passed. When he mentioned the early worship of Christians, he specifies that Latreo is specific to the Father. So I'm going to deal with Latreo. Okay, Revelation 22, verses 1 to 3. Then he showed me a pure river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Let me skip because of, because of time, I want to skip. There shall be no more curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. The word is Latreo. The question is, when it says his servants shall serve him, is it referring to God or the Lamb or both collectively? If I had more time, I can unpack this and show that singular pronouns are used both for God and Christ collectively. Just two examples off the top of my head. If you go to 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 16 to 17, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 11 to 13. But now, to prove that Jesus is definitely included in the Latruo here, because the word is Latruo. If you look at any lexical source, I'll tell you Latruo is often associated with priestly service. It's the sacred sacred service rendered by priest in the temple. So here, to prove that Jesus is one of those divine persons, not gods, that receives Latruo. Remember, don't take my word for it. Look at the lexical source. Latruo is used in reference to the sacred service in the temple by the priest. Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he who takes part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ. God and Christ together have priests serving him. What kind of service they give? sacrificial temple service, which is Latruo. So God and Christ have priests that give them service and they shall reign with them a thousand years. Further proof that Jesus is included in the pronoun, that he is the object of Latruo. It says his servants will serve him. They shall see his face and his name shall be on their forehead. So notice, whoever this is who's being served has servants and they will see his face and his name will be on their forehead. Revelation 14, verse 1. Then I looked, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion with him, 144,000, having his Father's name written on their foreheads. So now we know the Father, his name will be on it. But also in Revelation 3, 12, it says they'll have the name of his God and the temple of his God, and there'll be a pillar in his God, and they'll have his new name on their forehead. So Jesus is included. And does Jesus have servants in Revelation 2? Yep, Revelation 2, verses 18 to 23. To the angel of the church in Thyatira write, the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and whose feet are like fine brass, says these things. So the Son of God is speaking, verse 20. But I have a few things against you. You permit that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants, his servants, his name on their forehead. Serve him. He has priests. And finally, the icing on the cake to show that Jesus is worshipped and does receive literal and is worshipped to the extent, same extent that God the Father is worshipped, even though he's not God the Father. Revelation 5 verses 18 to 14. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. So spirit creatures are falling down before the Lamb in heaven, a vision that John sees by the Spirit. Fall down before the Lamb, each one having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. So you're worthy of this praise because of the redemption out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests unto our God and we shall reign on earth. Verses 11 to 12, quickly. Then I looked and I heard around the throne and living creatures and the elders, the voices of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, ten thousands upon ten thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and glory and blessing. So now all the angels render to the lamb this glory, this worship. Finally, verse 13 and 14. This is the, the doozy. Verse 13 and 14. Then I heard every creature which is in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and in the sea, and all that are in them. John exhausts the language. Every created thing in the entire creation, saying, to him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. So the Lamb is distinguished from every creature, and is receiving the same worship that God the Father receives from every creature, showing he's uncreated and equal in glory and dignity to the Father. Be blessing and honor and glory and power forever and ever, and for the same extent, and finally, verse 14, the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. So Jesus with the Father is worshipped by every creature to the same degree, for the same extent. Jesus, like the Father, has his name on his servants. He has servants. Jesus, like the Father, has priests. And what do priests do? They offer Latruo. So God and the Lamb have priests offering Latruo. And that's Revelation. Christ is risen, risen indeed. I, I'm not arguing with you, but just to clarify, you started off with Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 to 3. Is that correct? Sure, sure. Okay, you said that the word Latreo was mentioned there. Do you remember yes, for verse 3? In verse 3. Verse 3. So it's Revelation. Latreo. Okay, it I'm looking. Verse, it is Latreo. It's right there. 
Did yeah, it is. Sam, j- just correct me if I'm wrong. But was Jesus yes. worshipped shortly after his birth, multiple times yes. during his ministry? Yes. After his resurrection, but before his Absolutely. ascension, and yes. after his ascension, without Jesus ever saying, "Guys, what are you doing worshiping me?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me give the references again. When he was right, when he was around two years old. Go to Matthew chapter two, read two, verse two, verse eight, and verse eleven. Matthew two, verse two, verse eight, verse eleven. Specifically, verse eleven. The wise men found the child and his mother in the home, and they worshipped him. And even the gifts they gave him signify that he's God in the flesh. Throughout his ministry, I gave you one, Matthew 14, 33, where the disciples worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Other places, you can go to John 9, 35 to 38. John 9, 35 to 38, folks. There, it says, the blind man. When Jesus said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He goes, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe? He goes, He who is talking to you, it is him. He goes, I believe, Lord, and worshipped him without a word of rebuke from Jesus. Now, what about after his resurrection? Matthew 28, verse 9. Matthew 28, 17. Matthew 28, verse 9. Matthew 28, 17. A group of women clasped his feet and worshipped him. And then when the disciples saw him alive, risen, glorified, they worshipped him. And the greatest display of worship, John 20, 28, a week after his resurrection. John 20, 28, when Thomas saw the resurrected Lord of glory in his glorified physical body, he answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus says in 29, Thomas, you have seen and believe? He didn't say, Thomas, shut up. What's wrong with you? Worship God alone. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who do not see and believe. Mm -hmm. You got it. Now, uh, uh, Sam, uh, because I still have the verse, the passage here up on the screen. So let's recap here. So, what happened in Revelation 22 when John tried to worship an angel? <clears throat> the angel rebuked him, saying, Do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, hold to the testimony of Christ. Worship God. Rebuked him. What, what happened when, uh, when people tried to worship the apostle Paul because of the miracles he was performing? He ran out and rent his clothes. That's Acts 14. You can read verses 8 to 18, specifically 14 and 15. Rent his clothes. He goes, Men... We are, we are just men of like nature. Don't do this. Uh huh. So to to someone who is uh, is focused on preserving the true worship of God alone, that's a pretty natural reaction. If, if someone starts worshiping you, hey, stop worshiping me. If someone started worshiping you or worshiping me, that would be our first. Whoa, stop that! What in the world are you doing? Exactly. And yet Jesus was worshipped over and over and over again. And never bothers to say, guys, what are you doing? You know, I'm just a human prophet of Islam. Never crosses his mind. And so, Abdul Rahman, you just need to put this stuff together. You understand. Wait a minute. We're only supposed to worship God. Then get to, and then get your mind around the fact that Jesus is worshiped over and over and over and over and over again. The same way that the fathers worship. Yeah. By every created thing in existence. Mm-hmm. It's not relative worship. And that's why Jesus says in John 5, 23, Abdul Rahman, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Mm -hmm. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father sent him.